welcome back. In this video, we would take a look at uh, hands-on how to build your own Docker container and get it deployed on the Google Cloud um, platform. Um, so we would actually build off from the fast API version that we saw last time around. And this time, take that and logically make it a, into a container using Docker. So let's get started. Um, as before, I'm logging into console.google.com. And within this, I'm going to go to my Workbench instance and start it up. As with uh, the previous example, we're going to use the same uh, execution environment to spin up the Docker container. So let's give it a couple of minutes to start. So while this comes up, uh, there are a couple of other uh, you know, uh, executions that you'll have to do to make yourself or make your platform or account uh, ready for Docker. One is, uh, since Docker comes installed by default, you don't need to actually install libraries, but you do need to install, or rather you do need to add your user to the set of author authorized users for Docker. And that's in the form of a, a specific command, which is shown here. Um, I don't need to do it because I've already done it as part of my testing, but you would need to make sure that you execute this once from within your Workbench instance. So let me show you how to get this uh, working. And then the uh, the other set of you know instructions are gonna be very specific to Docker, but then, uh, once we get to the next demo, which is with Kubernetes, there will be a few more such authorizations or permissions that you'll have to take into account. Okay, nevertheless, let's uh, get back to this and uh, log into the Workbench instance using SSH like we did last time around. We'll just wait for this to come up. The Workbench instance has come up. Let's click on View Compute Engine and then SSH using browser. Sometimes the authorization fails when you try to do it the first time, in which case you just try again. Okay, this time it's gone through. Fantastic. So we're going to uh, work with a separate version of the code. So I've created a separate directory called Docker version. And from within this, there are a couple of files I want you to copy over. Uh, one is from the fast API version, make sure that you copy over the uh, Iris fast API version 2.py. Uh, if you don't have access to it, if you have access only to the version one or the one without the version number, then I can tell you that the significant difference is that um, the version two is geared towards creating Pandas data frame for the uh, scoring data or for the inference data. And the other file that you need to copy over is model.joblib. Um, so in case that is not exported, um, so I mean, the Python file should have already exported it by the way. So let me show you what I mean by uh, the pandas data frame in the training, uh, in the inference. So remember there is a predict uh, endpoint that your fast API is, is listening on. So that predict endpoint receives input in the form of uh, the iris input uh, class, which has got these four attributes, sepal length, width, uh, petal length and width. So you need to create uh, a, a pandas data frame with that because the model itself has been trained using Pandas data frame. So the earlier version of the uh, uh, the code uh, just treated that as a dictionary. So therefore, when you passed it to the model.predict, uh, you would see in the, in the error message or in the warning message that the required set of parameters were not present. So uh, you can check it out in your fast API version, but in this, we're gonna do the right thing, which is convert into a Pandas data frame and then use that for prediction. The rest of the code is uh, pretty much, in fact, it's exactly the same. I just added the Pandas uh, import here. Okay, so I've got the local version of the, uh, local copy of the file. I've got the model.joblib as well. So let me go ahead and issue the rest of the commands. So this command, like I said, is one-time addition of the user into the 
set of authorized users for Docker. So this this went through. Okay, so now I'm ready to build uh, a model, a module, a mo rather a model as a Docker module. So let me go ahead and give a target name. So just to change things up, I'm going to give it as version two. We'll see what comes up from here. Actually, you know what? Uh, version one is fine, no problem. In any way, we will keep overwriting it. Um, yeah, so we're going to build from the current file. Before we build from the current file, let me just show you what the Docker file looks like. So the Docker file is going to work off the requirements first. The requirements is actually going to be comprised of a few different Python libraries. Fast API is one of them. UVCon, we saw that again in the Fast API version. Scikit-learn, joblib, numpy. We're just going to add pandas to it because we explicitly used pandas data frame now. The Docker file is is a wrapper around the entire uh, you know code or functionality. So in the Docker file, you've got few specifications to say what version of the library or the execution environment do I start off from, and then what more do I need? That's in the form of requirements. And what specifically is going to be the command that exposes the fast API service? So the work there is slash app that comes from basically the app, uh, uh, which is a name given to the application within the Python code. So everything that uh, I need to run the app is is placed inside the work there. Um, the requirements.txt is of course the library dependencies that I need to resolve before I send it out. Um, I'm going to expose port 8200. Um, which is fine. And then the command to run the server uh, is given in this form, which is basically the command that you will execute in the shell, but without the spaces. Everything's been encapsulated within the CMD as a list. Um, so the key part, like before, is that the host is listening on both the internal interface and the external interface. That's why the zero host or the zero IP address is used here. The starting point for this Docker file is a Python 3.0 image, uh, 3.1 image that to the slim version, so that I'm not uh, extraneously building a lot of other libraries that I'll never use inside the container. Because if I end up using all of those, uh, rather if I end up building all of those in, then the container becomes bloated in size unnecessarily. All right, so let me build the Docker. Great. So it's gone through each of those instructions um, and it's gone through it successfully. So it's using the cache uh, because some of it is already you know, available as a local, uh, local download, um, uh, especially the requirements libraries. And then it's set up the, yeah, uh, rather it's gone through the command and even that is now successfully acknowledged. So the Docker image is now, successfully tagged as Iris API latest, right? So how do I know what images are available? I can uh, type Docker images and see what comes from it. So by default, it's ordered, um, where is this? Iris, Iris, Iris. Yeah, okay, there we go. Its latest uh, version is here, Iris API. It's not, uh, it's it's populated two weeks ago because there's no change to any of the existing files and I'd done a test two weeks ago. Uh, that's why it says there is there is no change. Let me do one simple change or rather, I'm just gonna touch this file and uh, make it look as though it's new. So now I go through the process again. Hopefully it will, build some things specifically. Nope. Uh, yeah, okay. So basically it's just used the, the previous version I've tested it out. Okay, let me go here and add a comment.
Okay. So this triggered uh, the actual Docker build uh, uh, again because now it's recognized the fact that the source code has moved on from the previous version that it built. There's actually another flag available which forces the build each time, but nevertheless. There we go. So now it's built Iris API and tagged the version latest to it. How do I know this is now up to date? There we go. So Iris API latest. It's uh, 464 MB size in terms of the size of the container. That's despite using Python 3.1 uh, slim, right? And this was built eight seconds ago. The image ID is the most important because that's what we'll use to propagate forward uh, into whatever else we want to do. Okay, so the Docker image has been built successfully, but this is only the container image. So Docker now requires instructions to take this container image and then actually run it. So that's what we're going to do now. Uh, we're going to execute this command. Great. What it returns back is the container ID. So this is the actual container that is running on the Docker platform. And all of that is running from within this workbench instance. Uh, the minus D command, or rather flag, uh, asks it to run the container in a detached mode, which means that it's running in the background. So if you want to look at what's happening within that container, you can attach yourself to the container by doing Docker logs and container ID. I will we'll show you how to do that. And then that will make it run. The minus P is basically the port mapping. Uh, the container itself has an application which is listening on 8200. And then you're mapping it to the 8200 port of the workbench instance. And of course, the image name is Iris API. You can also give image ID, doesn't matter. But yeah, I've used the image name Iris API. So it will automatically pick the latest version of that image. So let me show you what's happening from within the container. Uh, oops. There we go. So it's usefully indicated to us that the application startup is complete. Uh, UVCon is running successfully on the zero IP address, which means it should be able to listen to the external IP address as well. Port number is 8200, which is good. So now we just need to ensure that um, this port is accessible from outside. How do we do that? Let me open up console cloud. And from within, um, I'm going to open up the VPC firewall. And I'm going to check whether the default allow ML flow rules permit 8200. Great. And it's permitted it for the workbench instance. OK, that's good. So we should be able to take this external IP address, query it on 8200 with our curl command, and then run. Um, yeah, we should be able to execute the curl for a okay so where is a curl command uh, first let me just paste this out here okay so i'm going to pick up the curl command from the fast api demo okay There we go. Um, let's go into uh, okay. Okay. 
there we go predicted class is versicolor and with that um, we know now that this docker container is working fine uh, we can also take a look at the logs again to ensure that uh, that request was received exactly right so the request was received from this ip address and the prediction turned out to be okay so that's the you know working example of how the docker container can be instantiated so okay um, so if you need to know what are the set of containers you can just type this uh, these are containers which are running live right now from this machine uh, there are two containers that uh, the default colab environment sets up not relevant for us but the one that we set up using the iris api image has been running for about four minutes um, listening for you know 8200 tcp protocol etc the name is also something that uh, you might want to play with um, so by default it, uh, it assigns names for these containers uh, you can refer to the docker image or the container using the name and that could also be perfectly fine to you know share it with others and ask them to execute the same container etc cetera, etc cetera. so for now i'm just going to stop this docker i'm going to refer it uh, by its name and it's acknowledged that that container no longer exists great so with that we'll we'll take a pause so this was the example of how um, docker can be used to package up your fast api into a container execute from within the docker environment and uh, the way you execute is by creating an image and then have that image be uh, spun up as a standalone container and then you can issue various commands to it, uh, provided you've got the right networking rules set up for ex external access. So with that, we'll pause here, um, and then uh, we'll meet you on the other side of the video, other side of the break for uh, a deep dive on how do you take this and productionize it using Kubernetes. Mm -hmm.